Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video of mine. In this segment you're going to see two brothers and one of them is the householder and the other is the publisher. But he's pointed to this householder that Jehovah's Witnesses is worldwide Bible students claiming they know the Bible. Okay, this is a false claim. This is a lie. Because they use more Watchtower's literature than the Bible itself. And watch my last video. You know what I think about their silver sword. But the thing is, people, you have to understand. When they pull out these booklets, literature, and throw questions like why there's so much suffering. Where if a person should be treated like a child, because we know by watching the news why there's so much suffering and pain. Just like I was watching on the news about a fair, they had this crazy ride, injured seven, I think six or seven people, and one died. And they didn't show the part that the people was falling out of the machine and throwing in midair. So yes, there's so much pain and suffering. But when you use this technique to get a person to join this dangerous cult, you have to start thinking. The things you need to know, who is your true mediator? You need to know, is this religion that you're going to join what is a, is there on the internet about it is it rated a hundred percent seventy five percent fifty percent forty percent Job Witnesses is a zero. Negative zero. They are truly a deceiving religion. What makes them a deceiving religion? Because they obey everything that's given to them. No questions or you will be punished. If something makes no sense, leave it in Jehovah's hands. He will get the governing body knowledge to, in the future, will be to your question. Which, that's nonsense, because this religion has been from Charles T. Russell, Judge for all the way up to that day. So if they can't get the things right the first time, then there's something's wrong with it. Because when you claim you're anointed by God, that means you got everything right. Just like the Bible. Every single person that who puts stuff in the Bible even scientists and everybody that doubted about Solomon and Gomorrah doubted this, doubted that, doubted this even this. Found out the Bible told the truth about many things. Even as people was digging up cities and finding out the city was exactly was in the Bible. So people 
If the Bible is accurate, then why in the hell Watchtower cannot be accurate if this is God's new organization, if this is God's chosen people? Their literature and publications would be right the first time. So, Jehovah's Witnesses, you are not chosen by God. You have never replaced the Jews and never will. You would know this if you was reading the Bible and put your trust in it and stop putting trust on men. And this guy mentioned that or oh, we don't have we don't follow men that's a that's a lie because they follow the governing body because if the elders don't follow the governing body they will be deleted if the uh, witnesses don't follow the governing body and the elders they will be deleted out of this religion so yes you follow Watchtower because if you was using the Bible then why would you need their articles why would you need their literature something to think about so tell me what you think of uh, there's perfect what they was talking about and the guy who um, was telling them how good they were uh, and you know how they was talking to each other leave a comment on that so y'all take care and I'll see y'all another time bye bye talking to you. You know, the last time we were here, and I recognize that you receive our literature quite frequently, but the last time I was here, I left you an article dealing with life and death. Is it God's purpose? Is it, is it what he wants for us? Now, Mr. Smith, what I would be interested in sharing with you is the fact that Jehovah's Witnesses are known worldwide for offering free home Bible studies. And there's a short little video that I would like to share with you, and it's talk, it discusses what happens at a Bible study. Now, Mr. Smith, you notice that as you saw in the, in the illustration in the video, that people are interested in learning about the Bible. And as Joel's Witnesses, that's what we want to do. We want to teach people not traditions of men, but what the Bible really teaches. And as a result of that, in that watch show in that magazine that we gave you, it was talking about life and death. And there's a lot of different traditional views about life and death. Have you ever thought... And would you like to learn more about what the Bible teaches about life and death? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I have just what a tool that we can use. And it's entitled, What the Bible Really Teaches. And this is your personal copy. Why don't you open it up to the table of contents? Oh, I see this one topic. Why does God allow suffering? Oh, that's a great chapter. That's a great chapter. Why don't we open up there and I'll demonstrate really quickly how this goes. And that's the beauty of a home Bible study that we as Jehovah's Witnesses offer. Because it's, at, it's on your schedule. It's not on ours. So you can do it in your home. You can do it in your car. You know, we can even do it on my iPad. You know, I can have a Skype call with you and you can see me. I can see you and we can go over each paragraph together. And it can be as short as a five minute discussion. Up to you. Let's look at that chapter. And then notice the first three questions. How God causes suffering in the world? What issues are raised in the Garden of Eden? And how will God undo the effects of human suffering? Aren't those very interesting thoughts? Yes. And this is how simple it is. You see that first paragraph? Why don't you read that? Okay. After a terrible battle in one war-torn land, the thousands of civilian women and children who had been killed were buried in a mass grave surrounded by markers. Each marker bore this inscription. Why? Sometimes that is the most painful question of all. 
People act sadly. People ask it sadly when war, disaster, disease, or crime takes their innocent loved ones, destroys their home, or brings them untold suffering in other ways. They want to know why such tragedies befall them. Now notice the question here. What kind of suffering do people face today? It's, it's very painful suffering. It's suffering that has no explanation even. Right. And you see how easy that was? Here in this one chapter, we talked a lot about what suffering is and why people go through it. You know what, Mr. Smith, what I would like to do is return next week or even at a time when it's good for you and discuss this even further, looking at paragraphs two, three, and four. Okay, next week sounds good. All right, very nice. We look forward to seeing you then. All okay. right. Thank you for handling your assignment and Brother uh, Haynes for assisting. And Brother Sutton, what we appreciated and what was commendable with your presentation was your naturalness. You were very natural up there. And sometimes that can be difficult being on the platform. We tend to stiffen up a little bit or, or we become more f uh, formal. But uh, if we're natural, as you were, then the people the people we speak to, whether we're giving a talk or speaking to someone in the field ministry, they're going to be more apt to listen to us because they'll feel that we're sincere if we're natural in our in our presentation. And so you'll be commended on that. You're working, however, on re repetition for emphasis. And what do we need to do to re to repeat something? First of all, we, we look at Jehovah because Jehovah God uses repetition all the time. He reminds us many times if you look at page 206, we see that Jehovah God instructed, uh, he set the pattern because he gave the Ten Commandments to the nation of Israel. He did throw to an angelic spokesman. He caused the nation to hear those commandments on Mount Sinai. He later gave them to Moses in writing. And later, uh, before the Israelites entered the promised land, Moses restated those commandments. And so this is, a, this is what we want to do when we're teaching truth. We want to use emphasis. And on a return visit, of course, we want to remind the person what we speak spoke about the last time we were there that's a form of emphasizing and uh and also it says if we look on page uh, 207 in, on a return visit we want to use repetition which may involve review questions so we want to uh, use uh, when we speak about something we want to restate the main point of it or we want to use uh, review questions it also says that our our final statement should could be a summary of what we discussed and so we feel that you did that well and we're looking forward to your next assignment. Our final student is Sister Mercy Bow.